Okay, good. We're okay. So we're going to start a clean state slate. Oh, okay, but cool. If you, Let's but, do if, that. but if but if you if you repeat your past behavior, then you're going to be persona non grata. Are Understood. We clear? Yes, we Go absolutely ahead. are. Good. So okay. someone said you had a very interesting argument, and they were trying to to explain it to me, and I don't think they did it even remote justice. Um, the argument was about the existence of a trinity and why the trinity is a necessary feature. And this is a, a, an avenue. So let me be clear. I know very little about this. I am actually asking to be informed. I have absolutely no way of challenging you. And any answers that I give are necessarily uninformed on this issue. That you have a very interesting take or explanation for why the Trinity is a necessary feature of a deity. I think I asked that question right, but I might have gotten it wrong. I'm not going to be helpful in like challenging you in this one. So far, I'm, that's fine. You've done fine. Because I'm not going to be good at challenging you on this one because I know nothing about this. But they said you had a very interesting argument that if you need someone to play the foil to, I can try, but I will fail miserably. Uh, and and if, if you're going to have that take, then I won't press you on it, okay? Okay. Uh, the doctrine of the Trinity is, is necessary for the overall coherence of our world because in order for the world to be coherent, it must reflect the character and the nature of God. So God himself must possess internal uh, coherence, okay? Hold, hold on. So the, uh, just because I'm going to be slow on this. That was not me trying to cut you off. I'm trying to make sure that I'm following. So God needs internal coherence. Okay, I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and when I, I didn't say God needs. Oh, sorry, I apologize. Current, okay, yeah. okay. God has. So, so the coherence. doctrine of the Trinity, the doctrine of Trinity, once once you understand it in uh, theologically, which which is not easy. There's there's a good book on it called the Trinity. Hold uh, on. And, uh, I want to write it down. Go go go. Okay, uh, let me just pull up the book here. Hold on, I'll give you the exact. Someone says a book. I'm almost certainly going to read it. It's the Trinity and the Vindication of the Christian Paradox. Would you like me to send it to you right now? Uh, I truly believe in compensating authors, so if it is that's, copy... That's, that, 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 that's fine. The Trinity and the Vindication of the Christian Paradox by Bosserman. Uh, then it's definitely copyrighted. I will literally buy okay. it right now. The Interpretation and the Refinement of the Theological Apologetics of Cornelius Van Til. Okay? I see it. I have it on Kindle. I'll read it eventually. Okay. Okay, so... Because God is a trinity, okay, he is one God, one being in, es in, in essence, and he has a threefold distinction or diversity with himself, which has been revealed as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? God being actual and himself intelligible, when he creates the world, the world reflects God's character and nature, and that includes his internal coherency, okay? Okay. So... God is the one and he is the many, okay? In a certain sense, he is one, and in a certain sense, he is the many. Yep. So God, God solves the theological and the philosophical perennial problem of the one and the many. What is the ultimate nature of reality? Is it in its oneness or not its oneness? Well, the, the biblical answer is that God is, is neither... In isolation, God is one, and he is also the many, and those characteristics are equally ultimate. Okay, One does not have supremacy over, over the other. When then God creates the world, the world has oneness at one level, and then it has lower levels of oneness or unity among the diversity. So we have unity and diversity in the world. Okay, I'm there so still. The so the Trinity represents God's unity and diversity. He then creates the world and imposes unity and diversity. Okay. Consequently, then, we can have intelligibility when we speak in our world. Now, got the, the reason why it's Trinitarian— Do you ask a question? I'm sorry. In a, I'm a second. Let me just say sure, one. go ahead. Okay. So if, if we take one of the persons out of the Trinity and we talk about a bininity— or we add a quad inch. It, oh, you were doing what we, I was going to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, this is this is a common. This report. is the part oh, that I'm like lost on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it can get very technical, and there are other people that are better at giving the specifications than I am, like Matt Yester, because I have to reread the book. I've read it once already, but what happens is is we now have that each in the doctrine of the Trinity, each person 
um, is relational with another person. Okay, there, there's a relationship there, and they are within the context of something that's personal, the third person. So regardless of which person of the Trinity we're focusing on, they will always be in a relation with another person, and that relationship will be in the context of another person. Okay, you got that? Uh, yes, I'm still having a tough okay, time. Now, with- now, okay, now, now, now. So now, if we remove one person from the Trinity or add another, then... Any two of them will not be within the context of another person. They will be within the context of an abstraction, which would be a set. Okay? I think I'm following, yes. Okay. So the coherence comes in is that the, the relation the relationality between the two persons is always within the context of the third person and not an impersonal group, such as a quadrinity. Okay, this is where the the coherence falls apart for me. I have gotten why it cannot, it needs to be both one and not one. And it obviously can't be negative, so I understand why it must be both one and many. I've gotten there. It's the why not a different number that is the argument that where it where it fell down before. So I got to the it it can't be just one because then it's not many, and it can't be just many because then it's not one. And you said two or four, and I thought that was interesting. And the argument that was presented to me before about why it had to be three and not two or four was something about a triangle and spinning, and I thought that was terrible. I didn't say that. Yeah, I know. That was that I, that's why I, I wasn't saying what you were saying were terrible. I got a little lost. So, can you concise uh, no, that's that's not the right word. I'm lost on why it can't be 4. Why can't we add my coffee cup? I don't mean to be offensive in saying that. It's just the thing that was sitting I understand. Me. And by the way, I really appreciate you going the extra mile and having a civil interaction. Sure. Why can't we add my coffee cup? And I don't mean that insultingly to the divine pantheon. Why isn't it so because, important that I have caffeine okay. in the morning that that's non-divine? Okay. Um, in, order, in order for there to be intelligibility, the, whatever is in view must be within the context of a person. Okay? Okay. So... To use another example, where we talk about um, if there if there's if there's no observers, okay, right? Then then how do we have facts, right? Remember, you said there's no categories without observers. Remember, you said that yesterday. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so what we need is whatever is invoked factual state. There, there's there's going to have to be a a within the context of a person, okay? So each two members of the Trinity, whichever one you choose, who are in relation to each other, they will always be within the context of the third person. Ah, I understand now. I, I understand the now, relevance if you of add, if you, I'm there. If you I'm add, 100% if there. You, if you add a fourth God... It's not the third. Then now any two persons that are in relation will not will they will they will now be within the context of an abstract group. Uh, uh, You, I totally understand like that. I am I am over the hump as to why three is a magic number. Now, when you read the book, when when you read the book, Bosserman, who was vastly more educated and vastly smarter than I am, nails it to the T. Okay, I don't even do I don't even do justice to his expertise. Yep, I owe Sasha because I took way too long his place in line. I very much appreciate that we were able to set aside what was partially troubling and partially not troubling about our experience yesterday, and I look forward to when I have I, knowledge I have, about I a have, topic. Oh, I go have ahead. Complete amnesia. Total amnesia. I look forward. Okay. I don't to know what future. you're talking. I don't know what you're talking about. Absolutely. I look forward okay. to the future when we're discussing a subject I have knowledge about, uh, contesting with you my superior knowledge about whatever that subject may be. Excellent. 
I now I'm going to sing a rendition of Carol Burnett at the end of her show.